Hey guys, it's Carolyn. Thank you for stopping by for my stitching update. This one's going to be a bit on the short side because I have been putting most of my effort into really a single project, but I do have a few things to share with you that I've done since my last video and I am going on vacation again next week, which means I have so much time to cross stitch. Um, so my next video should have like lots of cool hopefully progress, but this one I'm actually I'm feeling pretty good considering that I also got sidetracked by knitting. Yeah, I can tell it's like the season for me to mess around with all of my hobbies, which is cool, but it means that I didn't get as much cross stitching done as I initially wanted. So gonna head jump right in. First up is going to be Mirabilia Designs Royal Holiday. I kind of pulled this one out on a whim. I just really wanted to play with the reds in here. Here's where it was last time. And here's where this one is today. I, I told you, it was really just here working. This is like a cloak. There is a brooch holding it here. There's a hood. But anyway, I just, I had like a little bit of the red here done. And I know this is a Christmas piece, not a fall piece, but I specifically wanted to do these colors because they made me feel like fall. I was honest, what happened is I totally opened up the pouch that I keep this in because I needed to steal floss for another project. And then I did the ooh shiny thing and jumped on it for a little bit, but I love it. Like this one, this one's actually going on a vacation with me because I had that much fun with it. I kind of went through all my pile of seasonal stitching and it's interesting how many of them are fall themed. And given that it is fall, you would think that like everything I'd touch be fall themed, but no. Next up is this Basilicate, it is Summer Symphony. I've been working over in these trees right here, which color wise is terracotta and clay, they burgundy. It is actually very full, like but the entire picture is not, but it was just, it was a nice and easy piece for me to pull out when I was feeling a little burnt out. Here's Rose last time. This is where I am now. Um, didn't do a huge amount. I really just worked in this sky. So it was maybe 150, I don't know, 150 stitches, probably not any more that. I didn't pull any of the other colors out. I just enjoyed that they were there. And I forgot, there is a coral in here that's very bright and summer-like. Um, to be fair, temperatures right now are kind of summer-like. I just don't have the air conditioning going, but ignore that. But anyway, no, it was really good like getting the sky. I am almost to this corner. I'm like, I think five or six rows from the upper right corner. And I, I just was really enjoying this one because it doesn't particularly over here. It's really just full X's. Like I don't have to think I'll have to get back in later. There's a little bit of backstitch, but not a lot. So this has been, like I said, just kind of good, refreshing fun. And I enjoy it. I think I'm supposed to enjoy all my projects though, so it's probably a good thing. Since my last video, the bulk of my stitching time has been spent on this Dimensions Kit, Holiday Hooties, that I'm doing mostly, yeah, this is the one that's on a deadline, and I am not the biggest fan of deadline stitching, as I have basically figured out. Um, good thing I'm almost at the end. Here's where it was last time. And here it is today. As you can see, some back stitching has started happening down here. Has happened. I mean, I'm the one who stitched it. It makes it very passive sounding. Point being, um, I really wanted to get all the way down to the bottom. And then in this, there's a little white X that you cannot see against this fabric, but it is actually the lowest stitched point on this entire stocking. And basically all I have left is there's um, to do this one's tail, finish off their tails and backstitch. There's a lot of backstitching, not gonna lie. Um, but I will say, as you can see how I've been doing these needles, like you can see them, but when I really like the backstitching and it's in black, I wasn't sure how I was originally gonna feel about it because it was almost, I was like, oh, that's gonna be really cartoony. I have generally preferred my backstitch to kind of, I don't know, maybe a slightly darker version, like a dark green would have made sense instead of, you know, darker brown. But I love the black for this. And when I look at it and then going along with the owls, the whole thing just ties together really beautifully. I think this was a super well done kit. Um, knock on wood, because I'm not at the end yet, but there is no shortage of floss that Dimensions 
packed with this. I was never, I have like, I have some of this, I have so much extra. I'm like, I don't know how they picked what amount they put in there, but it has worked out really well. It is super cute. And my goal is to have it done this weekend. So wish me luck because I'd really like to get off. This one, this, I've been so monogamous on this and I really, I struggle with that. I do want to be able to bounce back and forth between a couple of projects. And this one, because I'm doing it for someone else, I really feel like I have to give it the attention. But that's just me. But again, I think it is so, so cute. I, I don't know. I had never thought about cross-stitching a stocking before, but I'm all about it now. And again, you can't really see it great because the lighting, even me sitting here, there's only certain lights you can see it. So there's white snowflakes all over this that if I have it laid out flat at the right angle, you can basically pick out where the stocking parts are as opposed to like over here that there's no stitching. Um, and I'm not doing the thread outline because I'm sending it back to its owner, but I love it. All, the, all of the ornaments are in. I love the bow effect that this one got. I don't know. The whole thing it is just so insanely cute it's not something that i would have necessarily picked out on my own and i am so glad that i've had the opportunity and honestly the privilege of working on this with holiday hoodies i had done the fractionals because i really like the look particularly with the back stitch like i am so glad i did it i even have like now i have a, like a system for when i'm breaking when the back stitch is doing like a one over three one over four what like i have there's there's rules that i follow and i've really been happy with how it's been filling in so I was like, okay, I can do fractionals. How hard can it be to <laughs> fractionals on linen? So I pulled out Teresa Wensler's Fall Carousel Horse. And the answer, way harder than I sometimes give it credit for. Here's where it was last time. And here it is today. Um, I know last time I think I'd said, oh, I did like a little bit here. Like I really wanted to get the, and by the way, the colors now do not look just like, you know, Easter eggs. Saddle does still, but the chestnut tones for the actual horse and the flaxen mane right here, they are like amazingly perfectly full. And because I finally decided to start sorting the floss that are needed for the horse, like my ring of floss drops now actually looks like color correct for autumn and I'm so excited to keep going with this and I thought okay I'm gonna sit down I'm gonna knock some of this out guys these quarter stitches they look fantastic but oh it takes forever I mean I guess I didn't really think about it because when you're doing the quarter stitches it's generally set so you have a quarter stitch on one side on the opposing quadrant and it's do obviously over two so if your quadrant is two threads by two. So you have one in the lower right, one in the upper left. There's, and they're always two different colors. So you have those fractionals and then you have to make sure that the back stitch, but the problem is you don't put in the back stitch till later. So sometimes making sure that I stay on count gets really hard, particularly when some of these colors are so close to each other, but they're different. And when I've messed up, I'm like, oh, and I can see it. It's crazy. So I haven't done a huge amount of stitching on um, Teresa Wensler's stuff but it's really funny that it was way back when i was in college the old teresa winsler bulletin board is what introduced me to mirabilias in the first place and it's like what really made me get passionate about the idea that there was more to cross stitch than just what you could find at michael's and so here i am this is finally like the first one i'm stitching on and there's times when i want to tear my hair out and i don't consider myself a novice like and I, I really am of the belief, by the way, all cross-stitching, ultimately you're making an X of some variety or some portion of an X on fabric. It's not hard, anyone can do this. But it's sometimes the staying on track. And then I'm like, I get it. All of this was like several hours of work and I, it, I was struggling and so I put, put it down. I'm like, I really wanna work on this some more because I'm, this was, the one I'm gonna to try to stick to seasonally. Um, it's on an antique white 32 count linen. I bought an entire yard of this. So um, I'm doing each of these on a fat quarter. I don't remember if I actually cut it as a proper fat quarter or not. But anyway, 
I have enough to do all of them, so I want, and I have all four patterns, so I kind of wanted to do them in the season. I'd started this one last year in the autumn, then kind of put it down and didn't really mess with it, and so this is, I don't know, that's the one thing I would like to do as far as seasonal inspired stitching. Um, the reality is most of my patterns are like, if they're seasonally inspired, they're like snow scenes. They're very like, it's definitely skews towards winter and fall, not so much spring and summer. So if I went by that motif, like I would basically never ever get to do like seasonal stitching like for half the year and that would just be silly. So I'm not gonna do that. But like I said, I, I mean, I have enjoyed this. I, I do like the blends, the blends are amazing. Um, so it's really, really beautiful. Um, I also discovered she recently took down like all of her blogs, but I had looked at her art blog last year when, before I'd started this and it was really neat discovering that her art background was actually really ultimately self-taught and how absolutely gorgeous her work is. Like I really love her work with color. So, um, meanwhile, I'm like, all of these patterns, minus all the dragon ones, I think everybody knows the Teresa Winslow dragon patterns aren't around anymore, reasons. But anyway, um, a lot of the rest of her stuff, particularly the things that had been in books and that had gone out of print from Leisure Arts, the rights have reverted back to her and she has put them on patterns online. So it's really worth it, tracking these down. Like again, I have to say that, they're, like I said, none of it's challenging. It's just, um, it's like anything else, you just put in the time. Oh, I will say, so I did get this off of Patterns Online. There is a giant, um, word I'm looking for, the wrong symbol in this edge of the saddle cloth. It is written so that it's supposed to be 3031, which, it, no, it was 898, a very dark brown, clearly surrounded by 739 in Ecru, and I was like, looked at all the old pictures that said that doesn't make any sense and then figure out there was like 738 didn't have its symbol anywhere where it should have been. So I did have to kind of figure that one out just as a heads up if you do go down the path with this pattern. So one of the nice things, um, picking up Summer Symphony is fun, but it wasn't the one that was calling to me. And I picked up actually a number of these projects. I picked up, I did like 200 stitches and I was trying to find the one that is the binge worthy project. I mentioned that in my last video that I really want to like, the project that I want to sit and be with for a while needs to be one that says, work on me and work on me until like, you're tired of it. And that way I, when I do stuff like that, I can easily get in a thousand stitches, a couple thousand stitches. If I'm doing the forcing myself, like on a rotation, like a planned rotation, I really sometimes struggle to get like 200 stitches. I just know this about me. I don't know why it's a thing. Sure. Anyway, so Summer Symphony, it's not a complete full coverage piece. Although I think it might squeak by the 95% that the full coverage fanatics Facebook group uses. I just haven't sat down to like count it up because I didn't feel like it, but um, I don't know. I've been kind of floating around looking at pictures on the various cross stitch Facebook groups and on Instagram because I just had been looking for inspiration. Anyway, I realized I wanted to work on full coverage. So the one that I've been putting most of my effort into has been mini interior of Tintern Abbey from Heaven and Earth Designs. This is where it was last time. And here's where it is today. I, okay, it's not as much as I would have liked. I'm only down mostly to the bottom of this. I think last time you saw it, I only had like the top three rows of the this block complete. I'm actually now done with like all of row seven and I'm working in row eight. I love the progress I've been making on this. So I have some darker blues coming through here. I also love that along the edge here, some of the colors are actually like straight up green. Um, when you get them around the other colors, they all mix together. They look all beautifully like sky and it's lovely and it's perfect. And I don't know, this has been a lot of fun. I am really glad that I picked the scale of this one I did though. I started this one on Thanksgiving and last year. I'm still on page one. I apparently do full coverages at the rate of like a page a year. And you're gonna say, but you're only like a little over halfway done. Yeah, my goal is to finish the page by Thanksgiving because right now this is the one I wanna spend all my time with. It's definitely going with me 
on vacation next week and I hope I can spend many hours on it. Um, it's the same style. My husband's going for work travel. I'm a tag along and get to hang out like with no responsibility again. So it'll be great. Um, but I am, um, like I said, I love this piece. I really want to I don't want to say get it done, but I want to have really good progress with it. Um, if I'm doing, okay, so this is 16 pages in total. The bottom row of pages, they're truncated. They are not a full page, but at the rate that I'm going with this, this thing will be done about the time my youngest graduates college. He's in middle school right now, and that is not okay. I don't want projects to be year upon year upon year upon year hanging around. I, I'm okay with a couple years. I mean, these are not small projects. This is still 230 some odd stitches by like 320. That's kind of a rough off the top of my head guess. But yeah, I mean, they're not small. So I do want to put in the time. But I also know that it's like, it's still, you know, 100,000 stitches. So it'll be a while. Um, but yeah, I don't this is the one I want to spend time with. And I feel guilty because I need to finish holiday hoodies. Yeah, and that makes it sound like I resent it. It's not, it's the the part where I want to binge this. There was a point when holiday hoodies was the, ooh, I want to make the owls appear. And it was so, now I'm at the end. So it's funny, I run into this problem with all the projects actually when I get to the end. Uh, you will note Autumn Queen did not come out this time and she still needs to be beaded. And not much else, but I sometimes run into a problem at the very end where I don't like to finish. It's like that last 5% is actually really hard for me. It's really hard for me for a lot of things, so I don't, whatever. Anyway, um, that's just kind of what I had going on with uh, my crafting this week. I did figure out knitting is really fun for sheer portability, so I've been taking it with me to places that I think I'd intended to do some of like my smaller um, stitching. I don't know, I gotta figure, we would have to figure that out, but Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this really honestly short, sweet update. I will see you next time with hopefully a ton of progress. I hope you are having a great week and I'll see you next time. Bye.